My name is Father Thomas Paris. I'm from Oakland, California. I've been here since 1971. I'm the pastor emeritus of the Ascension Cathedral. Thank you. And um, what was your involvement with the uh, Greek Orthodox Folk Dance Festival? Well, I've been here since the inception. And um, uh, we had a, a f fantastic dance group and uh, they uh, put on performances. In fact, they even put on performances in Lake Tahoe at, at one of the uh, casinos there, uh, the High Sierra Theater. And uh, they did such a great job that they went to several other parishes. And I think that was sort of the inception of, uh, or inspiration, I would think, uh, for Mr. Parobolus and his family to try to do something on, on the church basis and the, the metropolis or diocese basis uh, to elevate the Greek dancing into a program where more and more people could take advantage of and get used to Greek dancing and uh, uh, enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And, and what's, um, what do you enjoy about Greek dancing? Well, I, I like the idea that uh, there is a joy and we need to express that. Our Lord said when uh, he told the people, well done, a good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the kingdom. So that being a Christian is, is filled with joy. And uh, dancing is an expression, exhilaration, uh, getting the whole body involved in thanking the Lord and uh, praising him. Even the Psalms talk about praising him in song and dance. So, um, of course, as a teenager, I love Greek dancing because I, I, I wouldn't be embarrassed in case I went to ask a lady to dance and she said no. I could just jump into a dance <laughs> line, into a circle, and grab the best looking girl's hand <laughs> and act like I didn't know how to dance and she'd teach me. <laughs> so that was a good icebreaker. <laughs> That's great. I never thought about that before. Yeah, but... so uh, you, don't, you don't have to worry about your ego being uh, trampled upon. Uh, but uh, I, I like the Greek dancing also for another thing, because we dance in circles. And I remember someone had a bumper sticker, sticker that said, Greeks dance in the best circles. <laughs> and I, I thought that was great, because uh, a circle is a symbol of, of eternity, and uh, uh, it is as it's unending. And he, even our church, we have in the dome of most churches, the head of Christ, and he who governs all. And you see it's in a circle. So it tells us that this is the Son of God, second person of the Trinity, who came out of eternity uh, to become man. And you'll see behind me, again, the figure of the Virgin Mary holding the Christ child. She was the vessel through which the uh, Almighty God uh, who took upon human form and entered into the uh, world. And the floor of the church symbolizes the earth or the world. Hmm. So God came to earth. But the circle, again, is the uh, key thing. And I think in dancing, we're holding each other's hands and uh, touching them, <laughs> and, and uh, as it were, uh, and uh, talking to them and singing with them. And even again, when someone's at leading, there's someone there holding him up. And I think that's so much about the, uh, the Christian faith, that we're in this together, and yet when someone has to lead, we're holding you up. You can do your things in leadership, and you can show your magnificent uh, dancing steps. But the key thing is you have someone holding your back. And the other thing I like about it, it's a wholesome dance. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I remember when I first in my first parish in, in, in Savannah, Georgia, they had the uh, uh, the twist and people were all scandalous because our teenage girls are dancing the twist. Well, that's nothing to what's going on nowadays. Right. And uh, I think this is sort of wholesome. Uh, it can be, you know, people can always uh, bring in the sexual connotation and the like, but you can still flirt and, and still be graceful. Right. <laughs> you can still meet somebody and interact with somebody and uh, and get to know somebody. And uh, it, it, it's a beautiful avenue for that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's an important ministry because everybody can, can dance uh, to one degree or another. I know one of my sons I was in a dance group and I called the director and I said, you know, I, uh, I won't mention his name. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Paul. <laughs> it doesn't seem to have that dance step too well. Maybe you should have some sit down this one. And she said to me, uh, proceeds said to me, no, Father. They're not going to look at uh, his feet. They're just looking at him. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. So it, 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 was, it was nice to know that, that you don't have to be perfect in the dancing, but you, because you're part of a team, and it's all of you working together and uh, holding each other up. Um, where are you from originally? Chicago, Illinois. In and I was very active in the youth groups, and we started the high school group at, at the time. And um, I remember my first uh, stage performance, I was in a fustanella, the Greek uh, <laughs> uh, uh, outfit that was like a skirt. Mm -hmm. And I had never worn a skirt before in my life. <laughs> I 
<laughs> but How I got old over, were you? I was only 15, 16 years old, yeah. <laughs> but it was fun. That's one of the things that I love about Greek dance is that they wear costumes and also you see the teenagers who are normally a little reticent, easily holding hands with same sex, opposite sex. Yeah, yeah. So. It, it, it is good, it's wholesome, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Where is your family from in Greece? My family's from Argos in the Peloponnese. Uh, of course, our claim to fame is uh, Agamemnon, the great king, was from Argos, and the Argonauts set off from Argos. Uh, and my scenic civilization was just there at the uh, at suburb. So that gate dates back two, three thousand years before Christ. So uh, it's an ancient mm -hmm. civilization, but um, the olive trees are uh, pl plentiful there, and that always symbolizes Western civilization gnarled trees and trunks. Uh, weathered the storms, but still producing fruit, as Western, civil Western civilization is still producing its fruit. Well, that's beautiful. Yeah. Do you still have family over there? Unfortunately, we don't. No. My mm -hmm. aunts and uncles have all passed on. My uh, first cousins have, have uh, migrated. So, uh, actually, I'm the oldest one in the family now. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> the patriarch. Yeah, that's right. I'm the patriarch, you know. Mm -hmm. In more ways than yeah. that. Um, did you know um, His Eminence Anthony well? I did, I did very well. I knew him as a student when he was at Hauke, uh, outside of Constantinople. And he was a young man who had graduated and was on the way to Chicago. And he stopped off to visit us in our home because my brother-in-law knew him as he was a fellow classmate. Mm -hmm. And he needed help to get on the uh, plane and I would help him a little bit. We introduced him to American coffee when he came into our little apartment. And my wife asked him, what kind of coffee would you like? And you know, Greek or American? And he wanted to show that he I'll have American. And he tells us years later that I had the American. I, I, I couldn't swallow it. I had to spit it out. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so you didn't know him well in Well, FDF. I knew him well afterwards when he became a priest. And we were in different conferences together. And we'd see each other oh, okay. that way. And of course, when I came here, um, he after a few years, our, our bishop was transferred. And he came. And we became very close friends. Um, to what extent have you supported FDF in terms of this parish with the directors and, and the kids dancing? We had a great uh, folk dance fest. Uh, we had great folk dancing here, Greek folk dancing, years before FDF. So we embraced it because it, it was an avenue for young people to get together from all ages, from uh, you know, uh, little kindergartners all the way up to young adults. So we had several teams, and we, we did a beautiful work with it. Uh, and so when FDF came, it was a natural. Uh, one of the difficult things, however, was that this idea of competition. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people hesitated because they didn't like the idea of competition. But to me, that's the essence of the Greek soul. <laughs> uh, the, the Greeks uh, started the Olympic Games. Uh, they had competition not only for athletic endeavors, but also for poetry and also for drama. Uh, there was competition with Sophocles and Aeschylus and, and all the other... Mm -hmm. uh, dramatists. Uh, so it's, it's part of our nature. And uh, I was thinking about um, the Greek word, um, uh, it, it means that we're together working, or, uh, together struggling. Sinagonizomen. Uh, so it's the idea that uh, competition means that we're coming, we're working together. It's not uh, we're, we're at enemies or, or, or uh, opponents. But we're people who are struggling together and working together. So I, I sort of like that understanding. Another Greek word for competition called amila. And again, it, it's one of these soft words that says it's not so much you're going to defeat the other person, you're going to compete with him. And I think the Christian context of that is that we, we need to learn how uh, to um, praise the one who passes us in the race. That's hard to do. <laughs> but that shows our Christian perfection when we can say, hey, I did my best but I applaud the man, the woman, who passed me in the race, who even excelled what I was able to achieve. But we're all pushing each other up to try to accomplish more. And that has to be in all aspects of our life, in our spiritual growth and in our interactions with each other. I hope we can be more patient mm -hmm. and continue to love and forgive. That, that's very well said. So many people have said that, that to understand um, the competition, you have to know that they feel joy even even when they're sad that they lost. And that's the elevation of it, because there's always sadness in, in not, not winning the gold or right. winning a medal. But the idea is that, hey, I gave it my best, and I'll, next year I'll even do better. Right. But um, 
each one of us is pushing the other to again to uh, do more and uh, when we have that competition our level of of, of virtue or level of physical strength increases and we seem to feel better about ourselves mm -hmm. you know Tell me about a little about your family. You have children who have danced. And We're blessed with five children. All four of them have all participated in Greek dancing. Other young boy couldn't, uh, but uh, they all uh, excelled. Um, of course, I thought my daughters danced better than my sons, <laughs> but my wife might say just the opposite. <laughs> well, favoritism. Uh, yeah, uh, but they all participated, enjoyed it. As all the, all aspects of the youth program, they were very active and. Uh, um, I think they uh, appreciated it and grew with it and uh, didn't do it reluctantly. Oh, sometimes they got tired and we had to push them to get, you know, oh, make sure. the practices. Uh, but uh, they really enjoyed it and then they began teaching too. Oh, good. Are they in this parish or are they? Our two daughters are in this parish, still very active, very supportive. And uh, one, one daughter has two uh, children, they're dancing very actively and, and the like. Our other sons, of course, are priests and uh, they're very active in their local parishes with the... Uh, oh, I didn't uh, realize yeah, that. Yeah, with many uh, youth programs and especially Church dancing. Parish. And what parish, you want to say their names and what... Our son, Father Jim, our firstborn, is uh, the pastor of the Church of Holy Trinity in Clearwater, Florida. He has two daughters and they're dancing. <laughs> uh, our, our second child is Maria Delviza. She lives here in, in, outside of Oakland in San Ramon. Uh, two sons. Our third child is Father Paul Paris. He's in um, Minneapolis, Minnesota. A, a, a great youth program there, dancing and camping and, and, and the like. Okay. Uh, and then our daughter Constantine, the Constance Joy, we call her Constant Joy, oh. uh, is a, a lives a bit near us in San, Le San Leandro and very active uh, with the, at the parish. And our well, yeah, one's youngest son is up in heaven with our Lord. Okay, thank you. And what was his name? His name was Thomas Nicholas. Named after you. Mm-hmm. And my brother-in-law. <laughs> well, the first years I wasn't able to go. I was here alone. I didn't have anybody cover for me. Okay. So I wasn't, sometimes wasn't able to get there, maybe try to get there for the uh, one Saturday evening, come home Saturday night <laughs> mm -hmm. when that was possible. I wasn't able to stay all three days. But once I had an assistant, then I was able to go a little more often, a little more frequently. Um, but it, it's very tiring, <laughs> and I feel sorry for the judges because the competition is so great, and I applaud them for their uh, their dedication because it really is difficult to listen to all those dance groups and to try to s separate them and uh, see who to, to win because they're all winners as far as I'm concerned. Oh yeah, definitely. But but the the best part of it is that children meet each other, and and the like, and I'm I'm thinking again that when uh, before I came. Uh, the diocese had very successful uh, choir competitions. The choirs from all, all over the, uh, the, the diocese would, would meet, and their choirs were 30, 40, 50, 70, even 100 people because they came to compete, which elevated them and it gave them a purpose and, and a unifying factor there, uh, but also to meet each other. Right. <laughs> a lot of marriages have ensued from that. And I'm happy to say that with um, at the Folk Dance Festival, the same thing, same thing is happening. Our young people are meeting each other. And yes, we compete with each other, but you know we're brothers and sisters. And um, sometimes the Lord brings us together and, uh, and, and we have some very happy, successful marriages afterwards. Mm -hmm. you know. That's wonderful. Yeah. Tell me more about the Choral Festival. It was here in this parish, but they came from... I haven't heard about that. Oh, the, the choirs. The yes. choirs. These were the ecclesiastical church choirs, okay. and they would compete uh, both hy uh, hymn, uh, church hymns, uh, and uh, there was a competition. I don't know too much about how they judged, were able to judge that. But once they stopped the competition, the, the choir federation uh, went under, oh. and we brought it back together in 1972, we just restarted again. But I think the competition is, is, is that which helped, uplifts us, because we have something to aspire to. and. Um, it, it makes us better. That, that's what competition does. That's what the American society is. It's built on competition. Right. It's, <laughs> yeah. a, it's a good blend, the Greek-American, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It really goes yeah. together. We're not to defeat the other one. We're trying to bring, elevate all of us to higher achievements. One of the other things I really like about the Folk Dance Festival program is that, that mentoring idea that uh, there's some great leadership training because the founders, of, of, uh, Mr. Provolis and his family, they always wanted to have the young people in, in, in leadership roles, 
so they can learn what it means to be a leader uh, with all the <laughs> income as well along with it. Uh, the, the disappointments and the um, backbiting and, and the like. But the patience and, and the leadership quality to say, okay, we can put up with each other, we need each other, let's get this done together. <laughs> so uh, that's what leadership means. Uh, they have a vision and uh, share this vision and people support you in, in that. And uh, we've, um, it's remarkable, again, we, we need leadership programs. Well, this is a built-in leadership program for our young people to experience what it means to organize a festival that brings together 2,000 people. And do they, they still do that? They still have the management team, right? That's right, the, the management team, yes. You know. And they work for months, if not a whole year, in preparation. You know. I know Ava and, and Spiro were just talking about that, um, how they didn't know what they could do until they were in that on the management team. Exactly. They surprised themselves, which, which mm -hmm. is, you know, I remember being in the altar my first year. I'd never been in the altar before. In my, I was in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I, they didn't know very much Greek, and all the priests were speaking Greek. And my first time was there, the altar boys were not behaving themselves in the, in the, behind the altar. And the priest got angry, kicked them all out, and turned to me and says, you're now the captain. <laughs> 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 no one else was there, but I didn't look around who was there. But I was the captain. Oh, good. <laughs> so I was baptized by being thrown in the water. Yeah, but, but, good, know. the good news and the bad news yeah, at the yeah, same time. Yeah. Yeah. But that's how you learn. Mm -hmm. you got to swim. you got to get in the water. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you would like to see us really, um, a message or any specific incident or anything that you would really like to see covered in this video about the Folk Dance Festival? Well, I, I think the, the the people learn to grow that they, it's it's more it's more important to build a body of Christ than it is to earn a gold ribbon or, or a gold medal or a silver medal, whatever it might be. Uh, and uh, w one of the things I was sharing just a little bit earlier, the high point I think of our dance program here in Oakland was when we were at a festival and they had a closing show of the festival and we had the oldest dance team, and they brought a young man in who had been afflicted with cerebral palsy or some sort of that. And uh, he was never could walk straight, never could uh, uh, stand up straight, uh, had a difficult time speaking. And the closing show, they put him up on the stage. And my heart went in my heart, no, oh, why do you do that? Why do you want to embarrass him here, you know? And they, they worked it out so, they put him in the center and they were dancing around him and singing. And he was able, with his own limited way, to, to dance to the music. And it, was, uh, it brought us all to tears that, in, it, no, we didn't insult him. We lifted him up. And I thought that was the best part of it, that these dancers could say, hey, it's not about us. It's about all of us together. And we have a chance now to show this boy that he is valued, uh, that we esteem him and we love him and we want him to excel with us. So he got the acclamation, standing ovation, of course. and not a dry eye in the... 500 people who were there at the time. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, you know. So that was a high point for me. Our kids got the message. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's not about them winning something. It's about all of us together and lift, embracing, lifting it, it, all of us up. Mm -hmm. You know, to higher achievement. That boy will never forget it. I'll never forget it. Is there anything that you think should be done differently? Or, well, I'm sure there are a lot of things, but anything in particular that you think will help the Folk Dance Festival continue to grow? It's lasted a long time. One of the surprising things, uh, one of our sons, Father Paul, actually has a degree in youth ministry. And he said, Dad, do you realize that no church has a youth program that lasts 30 years, 10, 12 years, maybe 15 the most. Now ours is, what, 40 years? Or, 40, yeah. you know, 40 years. Uh, so that says something. That means God is behind it. <laughs> that, uh, that's what I believe. God is behind it. And it's a, a vehicle for us to interact with our young people. We can talk to them. And then when they're disappointed or they cry, we're there to give them some solace and comfort. When they're fighting amongst each other, we're there to bring peace, reconciliation. <laughs> uh, uh, and we get a chance to see that when they have a bad hair day, we can be there for them too. So... Uh, so, uh, but this is how we, we know each other, you know, and this is how we grow together. And uh, I really think that I've learned uh, as much as hope that they, our kids learn in, in the, through this dance program. Uh, what, I mean, what it means to be a Christian. It's not just in the theory. It's, mm -hmm. it's in the, uh, your feet on the ground. <laughs> you can dance and skip and jump, but if you have to be rooted in a, in a deep faith, and that's what sustains us. 
and Christ is the, the person who came. And to show us again that uh, he wants us to have joy. Okay, that's the blessedness. He told the king it was like a, a, like a wedding feast. Well, you eat, you drink, and you dance at a wedding feast. <laughs> so that's, that's a symbol of the kingdom. And I think where this dance program does it. And, you know, we, we don't know how long the Lord will get to help us, but the, from what I see, it, 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 the enthusiasm it keeps, it, it is constant. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's amazing. Uh, now, again, uh, my grandchildren are, are dancing. And uh, we, uh, we say, come out of Roma. We, you know, we're, we're very proud of our young our, our, our dancers. And uh, we applaud them and grateful that they are getting following our footsteps holding each other's hand in that circle that says, hey, we're in this together on into eternity with the Lord, who is the Almighty God.